Hello and welcome to Be Shifted. My name's Addison. This is a, if this is your first time joining us, I'm rebuilding the front end of my 72 Chevelle, putting in a brand new front end rebuild kit. I've restored all the parts, the upper control arms, the lower control arms, brand new ball joints, brand new bushings. The sway bar has been redone, painted, de-rusted. Everything is ready to go back in. I've been highly excited about this. If you've not seen any of the other videos in this series, you can see them here. If you like today's video, please click that like button. If you have anything to say or you want to add to the uh, conversation, please feel free to leave a comment down below. If you saw any tools in this series that you would really like to get your hands on, check the links in the description. Let's get shifted. All right, we have our center link hooked up. Idler arm is bolted up loosely. I'm gonna come in here, 9 16 on both sides, uh, the nut and the bolt. I'm gonna come back here with our, our pitman arm, tighten down our castle nut, get our cotter pin through it, and then we'll be ready to uh, start putting our sway bar on. Sway bars in, center links in. Let's get to some control arms. You Hello. triggered a cue. It smells like hot dogs. Why does it smell like hot dogs? And we will give it a good. There's a bump stop. You just kind of get one edge in and then you turn it. I put a little bit of grease on the end of it so that it would go in. It's not like really solid, but it's definitely there. This little clip that I fixed that one nut on, um, I tapped it and then I put JB Weld on it. It's gonna go on the other side, but I'm showing you where this goes. So this sits right in the spring cup. The shock will come up through here. There's two, two bolts that will come up and bolt into the bottom to hold the shock in place. There's an additional thread at the top that will come through up here. That spring went in extremely easy, so that's cool. Part number on these one inch lowering springs is UMI 4051F, as in fellow. Okay, you're gonna see me reach in here. I'm just putting my my uh, shim pack that was on my rear bolt, I'm just putting that back in right here to make sure that the front control arm or the upper control arm is aligned correctly until I take it to get aligned by a professional. In case you have never seen one of these, they call these a set of crow's feet. And basically, it's the end of a box end wrench that you can stick a extension into or even just your, your wrench part there. And you can use it as a socket like that. That's what I'm using to tighten down my castle nut on my lower ball joint here. So. There you go, a little bit of knowledge. I have a buddy here helping me with the jack. So what he's gonna do, I'm gonna keep this ball joint in line with the receiver on the steering arm. And then he's just gonna slowly jack this up so to where I can get enough threads and put on my 
castle nut to hold it on. So at this point, I realize that the hard brake line is not going to be going into this wheel cylinder. What you guys didn't see is for the last hour and a half, I struggled trying to get this hard brake line back into the wheel cylinder. And this is me being very frustrated and realizing that it's not going to work. If you remember, I put WD-40 on the inside surface of these after they were turned. I just went ahead and took some brake clean and cleaned out the surface so that I have a clean mating surface with my brake shoes. Now we're going to go for the adjustment. So right here I can tell you a little too loose. So I'm just turning my key. All right, we got everything back together. Basically at this point, what's missing obviously is the wheel and the tire, uh, but I'm leaving it out open for now because I need to grease all of my points ball joints, front uh, outer tie rod, inner tie rod, I gotta grease everything still. So I'm gonna leave the wheel off while I finish the other side and then we'll get uh, we'll get back into figuring this out. In typical working on old car fashion, we have an issue. I'm on my last piece that I needed to put in before I can put my uh, grease into my parts and put my wheels back on. If you haven't guessed it by now, my brake line attachment that goes to the wheel cylinder stripped out. And you're gonna see why that's a big issue um, and it's not just one of those easy, oh sure, snip it off, put a new piece in. You gotta, I had to buy a tool. It's called a flaring tool. I'm not sponsored by these people. Uh, it's just what I could find. But basically, you have to buy a, you have to have a flaring tool. I went with copper. It's actually a nickel copper iron alloy. Basically makes it rust proof. This thing will never rust out. All right, check it out. Got my two sides, the one side going into the soft line, the other side going into the wheel cylinder. I drew a picture earlier, took a bunch of measurements. My bend starts at, my first bend starts at 1.75 inches and it goes for 0.75 inches. This is 2.1 inches and it actually bends outward so it rotates outward to a 1.5 inch length and then from this distance up is 1.6 inches. So I have gotten a hold of this. It's not very accurate and I don't know if I'm going to go with that exact design, but I'm going to get something that gets me back to 
where I need to be uh, from the soft line down to the wheel cylinder. Guys, I think I did it. So <laughs> I had to fix, I had to create my own washer for this, for this bracket to hold it on securely. I basically just went off of what I could see up here. Looks like they have a washer here and a pressure clip. This pressure clip was pretty bent out of whack, wasn't holding anything, wasn't doing anything. Basically previously, this was just kind of floating around in here. So now I have created a new hard line using the old spring, cleaned up the brake. I think I might be able, I think this might work. I don't know yet, I gotta bleed the brakes and see if fluid start coming, starts coming out of here and leaking. If it starts leaking, I don't know. Guess I just gotta make another one. I don't know. We're close. So I have, I have to bleed the brakes, both sides. I'll grease up all my points, put my wheels back on, uh, put the car down, and then I'm gonna tighten up the upper control arm bushings so that we set preload. Um, I already simulated preload on the lower control arm bushings. Basically all I did, instead of letting the control arm hang down, when I tightened down the bolts, I held the control arm up at pretty much the angle, maybe even a little bit higher. The, the angle I assumed it would be at when the vehicle is uh, full weight down. project has been in the works since gosh when did I start this I want to say April so it's been about three months it was quite an adventure honestly um, from taking everything apart to I mean taking everything apart and reassembling everything was honestly the quickest whole part of this whole thing cleaning off all the rust repainting all of that stuff is what took really long. Um, and then an unexpected snare in the reassembly process with the hard brake line going back into the wheel cylinder. So I just want to do a little bit of explanation about that. I told you in the last video that I was not going to post any more parts. It was going to be 
you know, we're putting this back together and then we're driving it and that's it. No more, you know, oh my goodness, or this took way longer than I thought it would parts. So that's part of the reason why there's been so much space between my last video and this video. What went into that, uh, this, this thing all the way up until the brake lines actually was right on track to be released, you know, when it was supposed to, uh, and then hit the snare with the brake line. The only parts that I wasn't replacing were the soft lines, the hard brake lines, and the wheel cylinders. They were still working when I took them off, so I figured they would be just fine going back on. What I was not prepared for was the old brake line nut not wanting to go back into the old wheel, cyl wheel cylinder. I think I spent, I just looked at uh, all the footage, I think I spent somewhere around five to six hours uh, between trying to put the old one back in, uh, trying to tap the old threads and and you know clean up the old threads for the old nut and the wheel cylinder to go back together um, and then actually buying <laughs> buying new soft lines uh, buying brake line hard brake line learning how to flare brake lines and make new hard brake lines so that's a new skill that I have because of this thing not working um, but then, you know, I purchased uh, these kind of brake line nuts and I found that this space between the start of the threads and the actual end of the nut was too long for the actual wheel cylinder so that it had enough pressure when the brake line was sitting in there on the wheel cylinder nipple to actually make it a liquid and airtight seal. So this was too long. Well, this was all I could find at the hardware store. So I actually had to wait a week to get the correct uh, brake line nuts, which were these. You'll notice at the end here, I don't have any space. So I have a lot more thread contact into the actual wheel cylinder so that the brake line can I can use a good amount of pressure to squeeze that brake line on there. Another element of this that I didn't expect, um, I bought brand new wheel cylinders so I had to take off, um, I basically had to take off all the springs from the top of the brake, move the shoes out of the way, take out the wheel cylinder, put the new wheel cylinder in. I, don't, I mean I guess I, I didn't think um, that it would be an issue, that this would be an issue at all. Um, until I discovered that it was. Basically, I put the whole wheel cylinder back in. I, you know, the brand new wheel cylinder, put that back in, put the brakes back together. And then I went to bleed it, and the bleeders were actually frozen in the new wheel cylinders. So that left me with trying to use a regular, I believe this was a 3 8 might have even been a 5 16 inch wrench, inch wrench. And I ended up rounding the bleeder, the brand new bleeder. So I had to take some vice grips and I actually marred it up pretty good, um, which again set me back because I couldn't bleed my brakes. So then I had to go to the store and they didn't have um, just a kit with two of these. They actually only had a universal kit. So it came with all different shapes and sizes. And it only came with two of these of the, that were the right size, right size outer diameter and thread pitch or thread count. I think I say it earlier on in this video, but this definitely turned into a, you know, a classic case of you think somebody's going to, something's going to take a day and it ended, ends up taking three weeks. Um, really slowed all my progress down on this. Uh, my motivation was kind of shot, but it's done. As you can see, um, it's driving. I've actually didn't show you all, um, but I replaced the springs in the rear as well. If you're interested in seeing a video about that, I did video it. I just decided not to keep it in this video because I didn't want this video to be super long. I'm going to kind of stop pushing the uh, links in the description stuff 
Uh, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of interest there. So, you know, if you are interested, let me know on Facebook or in the comments. Um, and if you don't mind, share this with your friends. Share this with someone. Um, it would really help me out. And if you've gotten any value out of this or if it's just purely entertainment value, I would really appreciate you letting me know and letting whoever, it doesn't even have to be a car person, just maybe they have a YouTube account and they like to spend time watching YouTube videos. Um, anyone and everyone is welcome to this channel. This is, uh, this is not only going to be a car channel, I think I'm going to start taking this channel in a little bit different of a direction. I'm um, not sure where I'm going. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for all of your support. And be on the lookout for more videos. There will be more videos. They just might not be purely working on cars or classic cars. Y'all take it easy and I hope you were shifted.